So I'm from Trinidad originally. I was born and raised in Trinidad, small island for those who don't know. Um, it's a very small island down off the coast of South America. So um, I have an accent now. And many people who knew me in the military never knew I had an accent, never knew I was from Trinidad because I used to mask it, right? Because you can imagine being a drill instructor, we're already yelling and screaming all the time. And people already don't really understand when we rapid fire commands, yeah. right? So imagine trying to do that and have an accent both at the same time. No, it would never happen, right? So, um, but yeah, I was born and raised in Trinidad. Um, moved to the United States. Well, we, well, take it back, right? So, <laughs> um, came from kind of a mixed mixed household type of thing, right? So, my my um, my parents never got my parents were never married, and I spent a lot of time with my grandparents growing up. But my my father, my grandfather, my grandfather was a teacher and a principal for many, many, many years, right? For like 50 years. And so the, the name is actually, I wouldn't say well-known, but the, the name, a lot of people kind of know my family in Trinidad because, because of that, right? Actually, both sides of the family, both my mom's side and my dad's side of the family are fairly well-known for one thing or the other um, in Trinidad. So uh, I could never get in trouble growing up because my parents would find out right, real, real fast. Right? They'd be like, oh, you Mr. Dulawite to his son, or you Mr. Dulawite to his grandson. Okay, I know him, you know, that type of thing. So, damn. Um, <laughs> grew up there, yeah, couldn't get away with anything, oh boy. So, grew up, um, my family was, my father was very strict, grandfather was very strict growing up as well. And uh, it definitely rolled over. It definitely played a part in the, in the person I am today. You know what I mean? In the way I kind of conduct myself. So, um, they were pretty intense people. My grandfather was a very, very intense person. And I'm actually named after him. So my grandfather's name was George. Mm. And that's where the first part of my name comes from. And then uh, almost everybody people are like, why is your name so long? Or whatever the case is, right? Because you don't normally meet people that have two hyphens in their name, right? I have a right. hyphenated first name. An I put it the last name. And um we, like that, that there was a whole big boil down behind that where the names come from and stuff like that. But a lot of the members of the family share similar names. Right? So my grandfather's name was George, one of my uncles, his middle name is Anthony, one of my other uncles, his first name was Andrew, and then Dulal White was the family name. And the, the last name is actually a made up name, it's actually a fabricated name. Oh, through okay. the years, right? So if you ever meet another dual white way in your life, they are 100% immediately related to me. Because mm. we, we are actually the only ones in the world. You know what I mean? Um, so there, there's no other dual white ways that aren't uncles or cousins or something. You know what I mean? Or siblings or whatever of mine. So hey, that's um, we're, awesome, the, that's sure. yeah, we're the only ones. So, um, well, yeah, growing up was was pretty strict. You know what I mean? Growing up on, on an island, anybody who's from the islands will tell you, things are different, right? The, the tempo is a little bit different. The pace is different. Um, I would never say that I was without growing up because I had the things that I needed. I always had a roof over my head. I always had clothes on my back and I always had food in my stomach. You know, um, we didn't necessarily always have the creature comforts <laughs> um, growing up on the... the like in school, we had, um, I mean, in school, we, we had uniforms. So it wasn't about like, oh, who got the new shoes or who got the newest whatever right. kind of thing, because everybody's wearing the same thing. You know, what I mean? everybody's wearing the same, same pants, same shirt, black shoes, whatever, right? So right. Um, I think as a result, it gave me a, a different appreciation for for certain things, you know what I mean? And growing up, we, we didn't have a bunch of stuff. So you learn to take care of your stuff, right? Whatever it is you have, you learn to take really good care of it. You know? um, so fast forward a few years um, and we migrated to the US. So my father, my stepmother, my older half brother, and Miss two, and my brother and sister, my stepbrother and stepsister that are both older than me. We all migrated to the US, to Florida. And um, 
when we first got there, it was a bunch of us sharing two apartments with my cousins and uncles and stuff like that. And we moved to Fort Myers, Florida. So Fort Myers is a relatively small town. Some people know about it, some people don't know about it. It's on the southwest coast of Florida, on the Gulf side. So, um, so we moved there. Being in the military was never part of my plan, you know. Um, and funnily enough, well, prior to joining the military, I was a mechanic. So I was right into cars and stuff like that. So I'm good with my hands, you know what I mean? I, I, looked at, I looked at things from that standpoint and that's transitioned a lot into the way I do things now, right? Especially with training. Like you went, you actually went to like school to become a mechanic or were you like yeah. a hood mechanic? No, nah, no, nah, I wasn't a shade tree. <laughs> I wasn't just a shade tree mechanic, you know what I mean? I actually like was ASC certified and stuff like that by the time I was oh, wow. So I got into it early. I went to vocational school and got certified and that kind of thing. And I used to work mostly on import cars and done a lot of building, was into racing around, street racing and all this other kind of nonsense back in the day too. You know, and, um, but that played a big part in the way I look at things, right? I look at things from an analytical standpoint. If there's a problem, it can be a few things, right? So you kind of break things down, process of elimination, that kind of thing. Um, and then uh, I was dating this girl and she decided a recruiter got a hold of her and was like, hey, you should join the Marines kind of thing. And she was like, I joined the Marines. And at first I was like, later. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> have fun with that. I wasn't even a citizen. You know, and, um, and then the recruiter got a hold of me and did his job very, very well. And I was like, oh, well, I think about it. It went from, I think about it to like five days later, a duck walking in must give me drawers at maps. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so she set you up then. She gave up yeah. your phone. Hey, like, hey, man, this dude's gonna join. Just trust me. Just talk yeah. to him. Yeah. You, know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure she got like contract PFC and shit. You know what I'm saying? Because, oh. <laughs> because of that shit. So, <laughs> um, and next thing I know, like two blinks, I I, I was in the delayed entry program for like all of seven days or some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? And, and I asked, next thing I knew, I was in Paris Island, South Carolina, standing on some prints, some mm. red footprints saying, I do saw this way to support the Federal Constitution of the United States of America. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I was so, with you until you said Paris. No, I was just playing, man. I just Damn. <laughs> hey. Yo, I'm, I'm, that's, that's crazy. I'm, I mean, that's, I mean, for, I actually grew up, I don't want to say grow up. I, I lived on an island as well. My, uh, I actually lived in Bermuda for, you know, a little bit of my childhood and uh, in Bermuda, like, I mean, just thinking about when you were talking about the whole island life, it's yeah. like my school was on the water. Like, I mean, it was school, water, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. right down the playground. By and, the beach. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and, like people would beach. always try to get in the water to go like, there was this huge rock, like a little bit off of it. And you just see kids like just chilling on this rock and I'm like, how the hell did you get there? You know, but <laughs> the tropical storms are crazy. I mean, yeah. we're talking grown trees, like bending all the way down to the yeah. ground, snapping off and falling off. It's 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 crazy. So 